I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be doing a vlog type um, to take you through my serial killer. So we are actually going to go on an adventure. I'm going to see how this goes. My serial killer doesn't really have any videos or any pictures of the crime. So I thought it would be really interesting and cool if I took you guys to the crime scene where it all happened, where it all went down, the town and everything. Um, I'm actually on my way to get one of my best friends at Western, so we're gonna go there. Alright, so we just arrived at Western. In our special kiss. Hello, Nadine. <laughs> <laughs> this is Nadine. Hello. She will be a part of today's video. I'm just gonna catch her up on what we're doing. We're gonna get some coffee and we'll be on our way. Alright, so we have just arrived in Leeds, Massachusetts. So I've taken Nadine here, my special guest on our adventure today, to our actual crime scene. So we are currently in a parking lot because we are actually at a hospital. I am at Leeds Veteran Hospital in Leeds, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Sorry, I can't say Massachusetts sometimes, even though we go to school there. Um, it is about 30 minutes away from campus, which is kind of eerie, but kind of cool at the same time. So to introduce my serial killer, her name is Kristen Gilbert. Kristen Gilbert, who was formerly and known as Kristen Sticklin, was born in Fall River, Massachusetts in 1967. So she is our serial killer on the main topic today. So after doing my criminal report and investigation, I have found that there wasn't a lot of information, um, not a lot of imagery, videos con like that contained this criminal report. Um, so adventure, we're actually here, we're actually transpired. So I wanted to start off with a little background just so you know about Kristen. So, growing up, she didn't really have many signs of criminal activity, I would say. She was very smart, which kind of puts a drill on the crime itself. So, growing up, Kristen was very academically smart. Her parents did know that she was a habitual liar in a lot of situations, but nothing really concerning until it kind of unfolded that growing up while she had boyfriends, if they were breaking up or anything like that, she would try to convince them and manipulate them into thinking she was suicidal. With one of her boyfriends, she actually said that she would swallow glass if she broke up with him. Um, but those relationships soon ended and she graduated high school and uh, continued her nursing career that she wanted to go into at Bridgewater University. During this time, she met a man who was named Glenn Gilbert, who then became her husband. After meeting him, she wanted to kind of be closer to home and him, so she transferred to a community college closer and that one was called Greenfield Community College, which this is also important because this is where it all started. So she graduated from the community college with her nursing and started her nursing career in an at-home care service. So starting with the crimes, this is actually where Kristen's first sign of criminal activity occurred. So her first patient was a 12 year old boy who had a high volume of autism and she would take care of him uh, every single day until the one incident where the parents found their son with 60% of his body burned and Kristen said this was from a bath that it was a mistake but as we know now probably was not. So as she got let go from her at-home care service, 
She continued at Leeds Veterinary Hospital. And that is where we are at today, so it is kind of cool that we're actually in the scene of the crimes where it happened. Um, just to let you know, Chris and Gilbert, who is a serial killer, was presumed to have killed over a hundred people at her time here at Leeds, which is really eerie. Um, as I'll continue, she was only convicted of four though, which not a good sign. It's very unsettling for the families that had to go through this. Chris and Gilbert suffered from, like I said, habitual lying and delusions. So as Kristen started working the hospital, she was actually given the nickname Angel of Death. Now this is because she had a lot of victims in her first year under her name, like the death certificate was under her name. There was about 33 deaths in her first year. There was a lot of codes being called and her peers started being suspicious and gave her that nickname just out of pure suspicion. Pure suspicion, but not even just like as a joke. It started out as a joke. But as time went on, Kristen started developing problems at home with her husband. Um, she, she had two younger boys and after that point, as she started working and there was no like really suspicion, she started having an affair with the security guard at the hospital. This is where there was a lot of sus this is where the suspicion really rose. It started to spike again there. What we know is four cases that can be confirmed of death under intentionally by Kristen Gilbert. Now, I would like to also mention that she would kill her victims by lethal injection um, of the drug Epernin. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, what this drug does, it is increases the heart rate and it can cause cardiac arrest, known as a heart attack. So, Kristen had four main victims that we know, and their names were Stanley, Henry, Edward, and Kenneth. So all these four victims have been confirmed that they had epinephrine in their blood system and that's what uh, Kristen was convicted of. We cannot firmly confirm that she convicted the hundreds other, but there is a good idea that she did. In the case started to get investigated was in Kenneth Cutting's case which he was a veteran, a veteran, sorry, I really can't say that sometimes. Um, he was a veteran, um, he was younger, he was about 33, 35 during this time, and he had multiple sclerosis, and he was really liked among the other nurses in the hospital. He was doing really good, he was on the track to going home and everything, and one night, Kristen was going out on a date with her mistress the security guard and she asked a fellow nurse who was in charge in the unit and asked if kenneth dies tonight can i go on the date not even two hours later did kenneth suffer from cardiac arrest and he died from this point on the nurses were frantic about what was going on and kristen was put on leave from the hospital now to cover her tracks, Kristen obviously got very nervous. She didn't know what was going on. So as she was at home one day, she actually called the hospital. Not that they knew yet that it was her, but soon they figured out that it was her. She called the hospital and said that there was a huge bomb in the hospital and that she was gonna blow it up. And there was suspicion amongst the nurses. One of them was named Kelly. Um, we do not have her last name, but Kelly came forward and gave the address of Kristen and the police went to her house, went into her house, um, searching it, and they actually found a talk phone. Um, this altered your voice. This is what happens in like scary movies when you call and they alter your voice. That's what happened. They also found a drug book that had um, Efrenin just everywhere. They found other suspicious things and from that point they arrested Kristen. Now from this point Kristen was only charged for 
the bomb threat because that is another offense. As Kristen developed uh, more into the judicial system, they found out that she actually committed these four crimes and was convicted. So she was convicted of first degree murder and, and three counts of second degree murder. Obviously Kenneth um, Cutting was the first degree murder. And as time progressed and trials went on, Kristen was going to actually get the death penalty, but since she had two younger sons, it was presumed that it would be unfair to her children and that she should just serve four life sentences. So she escaped the death penalty. Psychologically, um, after they did a lot of testing, she was presumed uh, she was a narcissist. She was a habitual liar. She suffered from delusions. So Kristen is currently in Texas federal prison for women. Um, like I said, she's serving four life sentences. Unfortunately, a lot of families can't have the closure and comfort of knowing that their loved ones did actually just pass away or that they were murdered in the hospital. And being in a hospital, you would think that the most care is given to your loved ones and that the best treatment is given to them. And in this All right, so now um, Nadine has come up with some a few questions just in case like I didn't review anything um, that could just relate to you and what you're watching. So Nadine, any questions? Um, so my first question is where did she get the epinephrine from? Okay, good question. I actually did not mention this um, when I was speaking just because there is a lot of information. So she got the Ephronin from the hospital itself. She would go into the closet mm -hmm. and steal doses of it a um, little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like too noticeable, mm -hmm. but I'm very surprised that the hospital didn't notice that Ephronin kept on going missing. Did she only kill using that specific drug or did she use a different one or did she use something else? Or? So what we know right now is that just because we could only confirm with four of the cases that she did only kill with the Ephronin, there are hundreds of cases that we presume that took place, but we cannot confirm that. And I know you've mentioned a lot about how the fellow nurses were suspicious of her behavior and how she was acting. Um, did she ever say anything like suspicious to them specifically? Yeah, so there was a lot of suspicion um, throughout the years among her fellow nurses. Uh, she made a lot of comments. Uh, she was a very attention seeker kind of person mm -hmm. um, to the point actually where she said she was related to Lizzie Borden, which is crazy if you know anything about that. Mm -hmm. It's she was not related to her, but um, she did say that. So obviously that's like where another part of the delusion came from. How is the hospital that she worked at? How is it being today? Because I know it's obviously still running. Like we're here. So but how do people view it today? So like when I started doing this criminal profiling case, when researching the hospital, nothing came up that was related like really directly to the hospital of Kristen Gilbert, which I found very interesting just because it was such a big case. And it only happened about 20 years ago. She was only really convicted of this in 2001. Oh, wow. So, That's yes. In relation to when the crime was actually Exactly. So I'm surprised that there was no bigger connection when researching and doing this project. Hopefully this one person was only doing this that was caught. I hope there's no more of this going on. Um, they're probably a lot stricter, I hope. But I would, <laughs> I would assume. But yeah. So, but we're here right now. And it was a great experience actually just coming here and just sitting here. Um, it is a little eerie out just because it is raining. And uh, Nadine specifically learned a lot of a lot about this case that isn't really talked about and it is so close to home that I would think that it would be talked about a lot more and it's it just really opened my eyes on to like the criminal justice aspect and everything that really goes on especially at a hospital where you don't think it would really occur.